All right. Hey, guys. Josiah here from EasyCaters.com. And uh, today um, I wanted to go over some changes that I've been making to the pre-market gap scans that I have programmed for Thinkorswim. Uh, these are targeted at serious gap traders. Uh, there's some, some limited functionality that's already in the platform, uh, but I found that that wasn't enough for me to get me where I wanted to go. And so uh, I started programming some solutions for that for myself, and that kind of evolved into the pre-market gap scanner package that I uh, provide on the website. And uh, so that's undergone several revisions uh, over the past couple of years as I've developed new things for it, uh, new features and so forth, and taken new approaches. Uh, today, I wanted to go over some changes that I have been working on. And what this does is it, it kind of simplifies things down a little bit and allows you to just use one scan all day long whether it, you know, you're looking at uh, stocks during the pre-market, the after hours, uh, or the regular trading hours, you can just use one scan for all the uh, all day long. Um, but also, it will allow you to look for special types of gaps um, at will, and you can change uh, what type of gap you're looking for uh, in the custom settings that have been that I've programmed for it. So. If we go in here to the settings, we'll just jump straight into this and show you what's going on. So previously, I'd, uh, I had a whole list of scans, and you can see that on the website here. Um, if I scroll down here, there's a, a list of the different types of scans that come with the package. And so you had your pre-market scans, and you had your regular hour scans, and then those were broken up into different, uh, different types. So And some of them were scans from... Uh, you know, percentage based from the high or percent from the low uh, so that you could look for true gaps that were forming between candles, not just from the close of yesterday. Uh, and then we have the gaps from the close and so forth. So there were a lot of different scans that were included in this package. And I said, hey, well, why don't I, you know, just try to simplify this down a bit and allow uh, the user to select which type of scan they want to run just by changing the settings. And so that's what I've done here or attempted to do. And uh, so to start out with, you go into the scan and you can choose your scan direction. So if you only want to find up uh, gaps, gaps up, then you would just select one. You would type in one here. And if you only want to look for gap downs, then you would put two here. If you only want to look for, or if you want to look for both up and down gaps, then you'd put a three here, and that would tell the scanner what, what type of gaps to look for. Uh, then you can choose not only the percentage, the minimum percent from the close uh, of yesterday or from the prior high or low or whatever. Everything is now based on the percent from the close of yesterday, uh, but also the um, dollar amount from yesterday, and also not only do you specify the minimum percentage or the minimum dollars from pri the prior close, you can also specify the maximum size gap that you want to look at in either of those uh, uh, ways of looking at it. So you can specify a maximum percentage and a maximum uh, dollar value. And you know if you if you don't really care about either of those settings, the maximum settings, then you can just set that to some you know crazy number like 100. 100% gap, which uh, will likely, um, you know, not ever be reached. And so uh, uh, the scanner will, it's essentially the same thing as just ignoring that setting. So, and the same thing on the minimum side, if you want to ignore that, then you can set that to something small like zero. And so that's how that would work. Um, so by default, these are going to come set to looking for both up and down gaps, number three here, and that's going to be set to 1% 1 um, 1 from yesterday's close and also at least $1 from yesterday's close. And the gap has to be less than $100 and less than 100%. So those are the default settings that I've just put in here for everybody, and you can go in here and change it as needed. But I just wanted to explain what each of those are. Are made for previously we only had the minimum percent from the prior close or the prior high or low uh, that was the only setting you could change and so uh, I had some requests for pe from people that wanted to specify dollar amounts 
And so I went ahead and added that here, but I've also added the minimum dollar amount and the maximum dollar amount, and then again, the minimum percentage and the maximum percentage. So you can adjust all those as needed. And uh, with all these settings, since Thinkorswim doesn't allow us to use these nice pretty input fields for the scanners, uh, you just have to type in the numbers here in the code editor and just make the only, the only thing you need to make sure you, you don't mess up uh, is that it needs to have this semicolon at the end of each line here. So if you delete that, that will uh, break the, uh, the code as you can see. So just make sure those semicolons stay where they are. Uh, the next setting is outside yesterday's range. So this is the gap from the high or the low setting. So you can say here, I don't care if it's outside of the high or the low of yesterday. Um, or you can say, yes, I do care. And I wanted to make sure that the, whatever gap I'm looking at is a, a true significant gap that's gapping outside of yesterday's range altogether. So if you put this to yes, that would make sure it's outside yesterday's range altogether. If you leave it to no, it'll just ignore this and it'll look for gaps that meet these percentage and dollar. Um, you know, it'll look for gaps that match all the other criteria, but ignore this particular criteria. Then we have a gap above or uh, above red or below green. So this is uh, something that some people use for identifying pro gaps or tier one gaps, uh, shock gaps, I've heard them called. Uh, a lot of different uh, trading educators out there teach it a different way, but essentially um, gaps that are, or stocks that are gapping underneath a prior day's green candle, well, that is taking out, you know, or negating all of yesterday's movement and gapping underneath yesterday's candle. And so that's trapping a lot of traders or, or stopping a lot of traders out potentially. Uh, they're waking up this morning and finding themselves in a lot of pain perhaps. So um, a lot of people think that adds a uh, shock value to the gap. And so if you care about that setting, then you can change this to yes. And that would say, yeah, I only wanna look for gaps that are gapping against yesterday's uh, price movement. So it would find gaps that are gapping over a prior day's red or under a prior day's green candle if you set this to yes and otherwise it'll just ignore this setting and look for the other settings or the other criteria uh, then down here we've got only gaps that haven't filled so there are a lot of traders that trade gap fills um, and so uh, this is more of a instead of trading in the direction of the gap this is more trading uh, with toward the uh, against the direction of the gap uh, so it would be uh, kind of a counter trend trade uh, or a mean reversion type trade. And so you can look for, you know, later in the day, perhaps if you come and sit down at your desk and you say, okay, I want to only find gaps that haven't yet filled that I could potentially, you know, try to fade. And so you can set this to yes, and this will only look for gaps that have not yet filled during the day. And essentially what that means is the price hasn't retraced from the opening uh the gap up price of the open it hasn't retraced from that back down to either the close or the high or if it's a down gap then it would, it would need to retrace back up to the close or to the low so uh, this is saying i want to look for gaps that have not yet filled uh, or retrace that amount uh, if you set this to uh, yes only gaps that haven't filled equals yes that is telling it i only want to look for gaps that haven't filled yet um, so if it's set to no, then it will ignore this setting and it will also ignore the next setting where you specify down here, uh, that you only, uh, that you want to consider a gap closed or, or gap to be filled if it reaches the close only. So you, like I said, you, you know, a gap could be considered filled if it retraces to the close, or, but it also could be considered filled if it retraces to the prior days, high or low. And so this lets you just kind of customize that a little bit. And so if you uh, want it to be uh, it to be considered filled if it is retraced to the close and touched the close of yesterday, then set this to yes. If you want it to be uh, considered filled if it retraces back up, you know, if it's a down gap, if it retraces back up to the prior day's low and tags that low, then that would be considered filled. Uh, and uh, so if this is set to no, it would do that, or uh, on the gap upside, it would retrace back down to the prior day's high, and it would consider that to be filled. 
So it just uh, just changes it back and forth between considering it filled at the, either the prior day's close or the prior day's high and low, uh, depending on um, which you have this set to. Yes means close. Uh, gap is only filled at the close equals yes. That means uh, I want to use the close as the uh, price that we're looking at for it to be filled. And then you can down here change the market open and close times in uh, military time or 24 hour time. 930 is the market open, 1600, that means four o'clock PM. Uh, and so that's how you would um, set your market time, uh, market open and close times if you need to adjust that, if you have a special market you're trading, et cetera. So anyway, so this is how you adjust all of those settings. Um, I'm pretty excited about this, pretty proud of the, the code that I put together here to uh, accomplish this for everybody and hopefully make it a lot simpler to scan for your gaps in the morning. Again, trying to push it, you know, push the uh, envelope and get it as simple as possible and uh, not have to jump between a bunch of different screens every morning to try to accomplish, uh, you know, your basic trading plan. So uh, I hope this will help everybody. Uh, again, we have some, the the basic criteria that come with all of my scans, typically, uh, uh, you can adjust all of these extra criteria or remove them with these X's on the side here if you don't want them. Um, but let me just walk you through those real quick. And so I've got the scan by default looking in the universe of all stocks that are in, and it's intersecting that universe with all optionable. So it's only looking at stocks that are also optionable. That's just a liquidity kind of filter. Um, optionable stocks tend to be a little bit more uh, li uh, liquid than uh, stocks that are not optionable. So uh, that's just looking for <clears throat> for a little bit of liquidity, you know, a hint uh, of a little bit of more liquidity for the stocks that you're looking at. Then uh, you've got your price criteria here, and I just set, got this set to a minimum of $5. You can set this to anything you like. I know everybody trades in a different range different price ranges, and so just adjust this to whatever you want. Um, and then you've got your volume criteria. This is just to, to make sure there's been at least some trades uh, for the day, especially in the pre-market or extended hours. This just filters out the stocks that have not had any volume done yet at all. Um, then uh, let's see here, we've got the average daily volume. So this is just looking at the last 50 days the simple uh, moving average of volume and making sure that that moving average of volume has been at least 500,000 shares or greater per day. So it's basically saying, you know, this again, we're looking for some liquidity here. We only want to trade stocks that average about 500,000 shares per day or greater. Now, of course, everybody trades different liquidity uh, profiles. So, you know, some people go down to 100,000, some people go down to 350, you know, 250, whatever you want to do, 1 million is the minimum, 2 million, you can set that number here. You can change the length or the type of average here as well. Uh, you could even specify it in terms of weekly volume, average weekly volume. If you want to change that, that's uh, available to you as well. Um, and again, that would just be, you know, four or five times whatever you put here as your minimum uh, average weekly volume if you do that. And then lastly, I have a custom filter here that just makes sure that that daily range, the average range that uh, the stock trades in is at least 25 cents or 50 cents or whatever I put here um, in the final version here. So normally I keep it at about 50 cents uh, or greater because I only want to be trading stocks that are that typically move a lot. Uh, you know, if I can't make very much money on a day trade if the stock only moves 25 cents per day on average. So um, this may or may not serve every type of trader out there. A lot of traders do trade smaller stocks, penny stocks, that kind of thing. So you'll need to adjust these settings if um, if you're trading those smaller stocks uh, or if you if you don't want these types of filters added to uh, increase the liquidity of the of the stocks. Uh, I know a lot of people use the gap scans with the low float lists that I provide on the site as well. And so if you're using the, uh, the gap scan with the low float lists, uh, all you would do is change the scan in all stocks. You would go down here into your personal list and choose whichever low float list you want to scan in. So you can see here I've got several different low float lists and I update every month. 
and those are available on the website. And so you can say, okay, I only want to scan in the universe of stocks that have low floats that are less than 50 million, say, uh, floats that are less than 20 million or whatever. So you can go to different levels here. And depending on how low of a float you choose to look at or scan in, um, then you might need to adjust these settings as well to, uh, to be able to find stocks within those low float lists that, um, that match the criteria. Because uh, you know some uh, lower floats might have different volume profiles and that type of thing. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the, the lower floats might also be penny stocks. So you might need to adjust the closing price or you might need to adjust the ATR, which would change based on that. So just keep that in mind. But that's all you have to do if you buy the um, low floats list. If you subscribe to that, uh, it's just a one-time fee. Or uh, you know, if you want to scan in any other list in Thinkorswim, you can just click this here, and uh, you would select your list there that you want to scan in. And you can also just clear this out here for the optionable selection. So anyway, uh, I'm going to stop it there before I talk your ear off too much longer. But um, I uh, hope this. I'm pretty excited about the updates. I'm going to be using this, and I hope uh, this is useful to. Some of the other traders out there, I know I've, uh, a lot of traders use the gap scans every morning, so hopefully this will be useful to those traders, and uh, I appreciate you guys' uh, support, and I will get these out posted on the website. Uh, visit us at easycaters.com. Be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if uh, you find this valuable, and we will talk to you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.